if you're capable of leaning on a friend who's slightly shorter than you, you can do this class. This is this is the class. This is literally the frame that we will be obsessing over. This is the whole class. So everyone can I find someone smaller than you. <laughs> <laughs> everyone just find someone a few centimeters shorter than you and just lean on them for a moment. This is your first drill, I'm not joking. Literally find someone and just lean on them. <laughs> If you don't fall down, you've understood the first idea. If there's no one smaller than you, get on your tippy toes and lean. All right? <laughs> lean on someone, see how it feels. Lean on them. That is all. There we go. You found someone. All right? I'm going to give you a minute to lean on people. That's it. And we'll come back. Make sure you lean with your elbow, not your wrist. Have some fun. All righty. Good. Come close now. All right. Um, I wasn't joking when I said that because... That's literally all you will be doing this whole class. I'll show you a lot of different ways of doing it, but that little frame has proven to be massively powerful for me. For all of 2021, that was kind of, I worked on other things like trying to be better at taking the back or this or that, or like maybe some foot long details or, but the main through line of my entire 2021 and most of my 2022 is the fact that virtually any situation that I get in, if I'm not completely like dead to rights flat on my back or like dead to rights in a submission, if I can get my elbow on you with my hand down, I can stand up. As long as I can do that. Now, you can do it with your hand facing yourself or your pinky facing out. They both work pretty well. All that matters is that I'm not extending. You're going to naturally find that you want to do this and push away, and this gets your back taken. Anytime I'll extend my hand out, it's helping someone just easily arm drag you and take your back. Whether you're standing, kneeling on, the, on your side, or all the way flat, at any of these levels, this little frame is your best friend. Now, in order to be happy with this little frame, you have to break the fundamental jiu-jitsu rule, which is don't show your back. But I think if any of you have, I mean, most of you are here, you've seen Preet, he exists, and he pretty much is constantly saying how that's not true, and it has spread like a disease amongst other instructors, such as me and Dennis, other people who also are fans of showing people our backs and somehow not being horribly punished for it. So it's, it's not so much that I care about showing anyone my back, I care about them gaining control from being behind me. And the way that I think of it, instead of it simply being about someone being behind me, it's about dimensions. So, has anyone ever, uh, there's a, like a little uh, know, a parable anecdote, a story about if you imagine that you made a fish tank that was so narrow that the fish could only move in two directions, right? And that fish lived their entire life in a two-dimensional world. They would have no way of fathoming the third dimension, right? If you took them out of their bowl, they would not be able to fathom the third dimension. If, as long as I can keep people in two dimensions, if no one will ever inject themselves into the third dimension of me, they cannot control me. So, if I am directly in front of Natasha, hey, hey, you're in the third dimension, come down. <laughs> if, I'm in the third, if I'm in front of Natasha, if I never let her inject something into the third dimension, she will never control me, right? And so that's gonna be, this is a secondary thing, that I learned from Chris Payne's that I obsessively use now, it's called dog leash. I am forcing myself to be in the same plane as Natasha. We are parallel to each other. In order for her to control me, she needs to inject a hand or a leg into that third dimension, right? And so if I simply leave myself here and keep doing this, she can never actually finish controlling me because she needs that hand to enter the third dimension and I'm holding onto it. And then my other hand keeps her away sliding out to here, you'll find there's like waypoints. There's the wrist is one. From right here is my forearm right here on her throat, my elbow on this shoulder. So same thing goes for right here. As long as I have my body in a shape that she can't readily attach to, it's very hard for her to control me. If I put my hands in the air and she gives me a hug, well, now she's got some control of me. But if I simply move her face away and put this little shape of my elbow right here, Suddenly, even though she's still hugging me, it doesn't feel like she can actually move me very well. This little elbow being in here is a game changer, which is why all I need is the elbow. You will be tempted to put your wrist right here. And this is virtually useless. Even though I'm much larger than Tosh, if she just pushes her hand into my elbow, uh, no, sorry, just show your head into my elbow, 
I actually can't straighten it. So I'm significantly heavier and, and stronger and bigger than Natasha, and I'm still trapped here because I put my wrist in. Comparatively speaking, if I put my elbow in, drive in, I can pretty much almost always, no, extend. So get with a partner, I'm just gonna experiment with this. Let your partner do perfect. Your partner's gonna give you a hug, put your wrist in, try and push them away. You should fail unless you're, unless you're just supremely larger than your partner. This should not work. Then replace it with the tip of your elbow, press away or press down, and see if they can still crush you. You're gonna find you should be able to walk pretty casually and they can't actually do much. So this is my favorite thing. So just do this real fast and then we're gonna actually start using these. These are the little mini drills. All right, and why not, we'll clap. One, two. <laughs> Has anybody, did everybody get to go, right? Did anybody just have a complete failure? And be like, boo? Or, I mean, maybe, but I'm not here to talk about that. Like, a jiu-jitsu failure, not, personal failures are for after class. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna talk about, um, so to complement um, our little lean, I'm gonna give you kind of a decision tree. You have, it's pretty much a step one and a step two. You're gonna ask her the question, do I feel pressure? Because this frame only works as long as your partner is maintaining forward pressure. If your partner is maintaining forward pressure, they will help you stand up by pushing into your frame and help you keep them away. The second they begin to retreat, your frame becomes useless. And thus, but, you, but what do they do? In order to retreat, they create space. If someone creates space, they give us what? A guard or whatever else we want. So we're gonna go from a pretty good position standing to the worst position, laying down. I'm all the way on the floor, and Natasha's on top of me. And I'm just gonna lay down like I'm on like posing for a beach calendar or whatever, as you would do, you know? And the key bit is that I'm doing things that we, we think are bad, right? I've let Natasha pass my legs already, and I don't have an underhook, I don't have anything, but it's all, what I decide is based upon how Natasha's holding me down. If Natasha had her hand on this side, then I wouldn't have access to her neck. And I would have to do this motion with my elbow in her armpit instead, which is a slightly different thing, which we'll cover later. So instead, I'm gonna actually back up just slightly, Natasha back up here. So the moment, the moment is, Natasha just passed my legs, but she has yet to control my armpit. This to me is the most critical moment in bottom player jiu-jitsu, is knowing when your guard is no longer what's going to save you, and that you should probably start using your arms. So, and for me that moment is, once she has killed and gotten significantly past my knee and is beginning to control my hip, my arms and structure should begin really becoming more important than just my legs. So Natasha's vertical, she just passed my legs. As she's, in order to control me, she must bring her head down. If Natasha rem remains standing and just starts to circle to my back, I also have the freedom to circle and square back up. Or if I choose to go the other way, the freedom to roll away or the freedom to invert, right? If she's choosing to stay standing up, she is far from me. If she wants to actually control me, she must bring her head down, which puts her into the range of my frame. And worst case scenario, she's so fast, I didn't get up. But that doesn't matter, she's going to have to now try to get into my armpits. She's driving forward. I leave my elbow here, same thing I told you, right? It's my elbow pressing down. Don't be tempted to do this, this gets you gift wrapped. Come back. And everyone, when I teach this to, they, the first time they're like, like this, whack. No, that's not it. <laughs> so make sure your elbow also, uh, even if you've done Muay Thai, don't elbow them across the jaw. As much as it's tempting to be like, you know, like, <laughs> but take your elbow and press down. So I'm right here. I, I don't want to be doing too much effort. If I ever feel like I'm slipping, it means she's not giving me enough pressure and I should just stand up. I always want to fill the space. So if Natasha is not pressuring into me, that means I can replace guard. If Natasha's doing her job as like a good wrestler, she's gonna be circling and I, I will not physically be able to replace my legs, which means I must move into space that way. And so I almost act like we're, it's, it's blue, so like I'm at a pool, I'm doing the backstroke. I reach back, I slide my body into space, and now I'm on my elbow. She's still chasing me, I cannot 
just take my guard. There's no way my feet reach there. Reach there. So I do it again. I slide and get up to my hand. Ah, she's still following me. I slide and come to a knee. She's still following me. I stand all the way up. And now I'm up. From here I decide. I can grab here and leave. I can, if she's trying to slide by, like slide by my elbow, by like move elbow. your head to the other side, hit my back. I can always come out and check, going for that, that dog leech if I want, and throw behind again. It all depends on how persistent she is. Then back down. But the, my entire reason for doing this isn't just because it's useful, is because my goal is to convince my partner to do dumb things. Who does dumb things? Tired people, emotional people, anyone who's not thinking coldly, right? If someone is like, oh, I hate this guy, the jiu-jitsu just got worse. If you're like, this is so annoying, the jiu-jitsu just got worse. I'm tired, the jiu-jitsu just got worse. And so I'm gonna keep on making their life annoying. If you've rolled with me, I've probably done this to you. I do this almost every roll. And so as she drives in, she might be like, I'm sick of driving in and back off. When she backs off, there's my guard. And now I just play regular normal jiu-jitsu. Whatever you play from butterflies, whatever guard you like. All right? But I've convinced her that driving into me with pressure and anger is a waste of her time. And I've won now. I've won the mental battle of who decides what kind of match we're having. So just try that. So the, the process, if you're going to look at it real slow, keeping my elbow down, not going across her jaw, not extending, but simply keeping the structure in place. And it's maintained like a spring by her pressure. She presses in, it should feel strong. Reach back, rise up. See, I'm sliding. It's okay to use my feet as well. Reach back, rise up. I'm gonna keep rising as long as she maintains pressure. So the question is, is there pressure? Yes, move into space. Is there pressure? Yes, move into space. If the answer is ever no, then I square up. And then from right here, I can just simply take, I like saying, I have a habit of anytime I clear someone's grip, I just say no. And it just makes that touch more annoying. No. <laughs> And, and it makes them not want to do it. And they'll do it again, no. And after three or four no's, people just stop grabbing me. <laughs> so that's all. Just go from the bottom to standing. I'll show it one more time because it is, it's actually like Wim was talking about technique in standing up. And Michael Curry had a great class on the same thing, just standing up. Um, there is a technique to it. So backstroke into space, slide. This hand right here is okay, be here, until they start grabbing it. If Tasha starts grabbing my hand, this is a problem. I must, I'll leave it over here. I don't like this here because there's more pressure on my shoulder, so it must be temporary. I'll leave it here until they figure out they're grabbing my hand is a good idea. Then I'm like, crap, I have to do it this way. Same thing, I have my legs, slide away. Slide up to my knee, and stand up. All right, those are your steps. Have fun, one, two. I keep saying elbow because I have the habit of saying elbow, but the elbow, people sometimes think it's the back part. I don't mean that. I mean the lower part of the forearm. Like the part, I say elbow because I've done Muay Thai and it's the part of the elbow I hit things with, but it's, it's this part. Like, this part right here. So imagine measuring two inches from right here, just like you do when you're hiding your elbow in um, turtle or panda or any of those. Right there is the, is the sweet spot. And you always want to keep your, your shoulders in a line to be keep structurally strong. You don't want to sag. Sagging is bad. No one likes things that sag. All right, so keep, keep it in a nice line and be strong. All right? That is all. Oh, huh, was that? Ah. There's a line of, the, of force between where they're pressing into me and the floor. Sometimes people have the habit of doing that, and it breaks the line, and it hurts your bottom shoulder. So resist this temptation and be there. Great question. Off you go. All right. There are more things from here, but I want to add some semi-realism semi for you. Um, what we're going to do is play a little game. And I, I ideally, like, this isn't going to work immediately. You're going to make mistakes and people are going to mess you up, take your back, beat you, etc. But I'm telling you, if you put even, like, a week, not even, or, like, if, like, honestly, a week lazily or, like, two days with determination to this, it just bears so much fruit. I have white belts who have been training, like, a year 
who it makes it hard for me to hold them down with this. So all your partner's gonna do <coughs> is kneel right here next to you, and we're gonna say go. Their job is gonna be simply to flatten you out, keep you down, take your back, do whatever they can. Your job is gonna be literally just, just stand up. Stand up or replace guard, because if your partner doesn't chase you, say we say go, and Natasha's like asleep, I can just take guard and I win. Say I say go, Natasha's on her game. She goes for it. I immediately make my frame. She's chasing me, but I should still be able to stand up, right? I got up, right? But see, right here, here's the cool thing, right? So like, I have had people, so fun fact, I experimented with this. I, I rolled with a really high level wrestler and that's exactly what he did. He picked me up and slammed me to the mat. But the weird thing I noticed was as long as I have this frame in, even if I get like massively mat returned, it just didn't hurt. It was really weird because he couldn't drive his chest into my organs to like really plant me in the mat. All of his power went into my forearm, in his face, and he didn't enjoy that. And so, so even, I don't know if Natasha's gonna do a big mat return, but we're gonna pretend like that she threw me. Even if I smash down into here, because my elbow's still here, I actually bounced and could immediately rise up and pummel my, my hooks in. So I've really been constantly checking if I can get that butterfly. Because if I can get this butterfly, well then suddenly, instead of me just standing up, I can literally, if Natasha's choosing to keep her hands together, whoop, toss her over there. If she opens her hands up, leg lock time. If she doesn't open her hands up, she flies. So I wasn't planning on getting into the leg lock part just yet, but all I want you to do is get with your partner and have them genuinely try and hold you down. And all I want you to do is to genuinely focus all of your effort on elbow, pressing down, and then using this algorithm. Is there pressure? Move to space and stand. Is there pressure? No. Guard. That is all. I feel looseness. Guard. I feel pressure. Stand. Try this algorithm out and have your partner attack you three times. Time number one, they're going to pretend that they're bad at jiu-jitsu. Time number two, they're going to pretend that they're okay at jiu-jitsu. Time number three, they're going to pretend that they're great at jiu-jitsu. <laughs> One of these might be true, but you're going to pretend all three times. <laughs> all right, off you go. One, two. <laughs> This is one version. So one version of the frame is the above the shoulder version. And this is starting from a scramble, starting from that moment when they're trying to pass your guard. Before I move on, did anybody have any catastrophic problems where you're like, I just don't think this works? Yes. What happened? Um, when, when I released some pressure and then I, I pulled the arm and press it on the elbow. I yes. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Go so around. It's his job, the second you release pressure, to put his feet in. In which case you can't go around anymore. If he's, so, so this is why this technique only works if you're able to relax and maintain that sensitivity. If you're going, then you can't feel when they release pressure. So who's your partner? Okay, show me. Oh, wait, wait. you took his back, right? Yeah. And he was framing. So let's just do it again. Oh yeah, freeze. Stop. So this happens back because from the beginning he never had a frame. So really important, everyone look real fast. Everyone look over here. The frame only works if you are on your side. Come back down. The second your top shoulder begins to fall away, your frame is over and things are going to suck really bad. So we could go for the the one on the floor first and then put the frame in or? No, I always, I always will, will uh, come for this. But if my partner is really far away, I should be trying to get my guard. If there's enough space that I can't reach his face, my legs are a better investment of time. Yeah. My frame makes more sense if, if he's, because he's so far over here. Legs are going to be really hard. But if I can't reach him, then actually, oh, so I know something. Yes, if I can't reach him, get up, rise up on your elbow to get to him. And now we're in business. 
If I simply stay all the way down, his answer to this is this. If he puts my knee shoulder on the mat, it just won't work. So hop out for a second. Oh, place me with him. So I'm here. Right now, I feel pressure in my elbow. I feel fine. Get a little taller, like uh, a little way in taller. Yeah, if I felt this, I feel like this is a waste of my time. I feel slippage. I don't feel pressure on my frame. I feel worried. I must have pressure on my frame. I rise, now there's pressure on my frame. Now I feel good about my situation. I must make it so that my structure has tension on it. And I'm down here, he's up there. This is gonna be hard. He's trying to go ahead, he's pressuring it. I feel great, I'm gonna immediately rise. Go ahead and uh, go for the back take, I'm just curious, go. So as he's pulling, right, he can't take it out because it's because there's pressure here. If, if I stay down as he rises up, bloop, and he takes my back. So your, your cue is feeling pressure on that sweet spot in your elbow. And that's where it becomes kind of a finesse situation. Thank you, thank you. All right, so now we're gonna talk about plan B where you, you kind of blacked out and you woke up and someone had you in side control. You don't know how it happened. You were in your tournament match, ready to go. You blinked, touched the side control. You come to from your, your, your blackout and they have side control. And you're like, oh shit. Right? We've all done it. You, I don't know if maybe it was me. Like, we had that moment in the tournament where you just kind of froze and you're like, all right, this is my life now. I'm down by, down by five points. They got a takedown and they have me in side control. Let's try and salvage this match. I'm gonna frame. All I care about is getting my fingers in Natasha's armpit. As long as I'm here, I, it's gonna be a little bit hard because she's really got everything in my armpit and a lot of control in me. All I'm gonna be trying to do, I mean, obviously I can try regular jiu-jitsu. I always try regular jiu-jitsu as well. I can try to get my regular frame in and good old knee elbow escape. This is all great too. I will try this if I can. If as I'm doing this, Natasha kills my knee, like knocks my knee back out and is still doing it, now look what I have. I have access to her elbow. I just put my fingers in that armpit. That's all I need. Fingers in my armpit. Now I can simply turn away. And now I have the same frame but in her armpit. And then I do the exact same thing. Is Natasha pressuring into me? Yes, I'll go to space. Is she pressuring into me? Yes, I'm going to rise even higher. With the only difference being, when I have her access to her armpit, I have more control over, which means I have the option of doing one of my favorite things in all of grappling. Something that I call butt judo. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Judo from my butt. I'm on my butt, and Natasha has a beautiful ogoshi opportunity. And so I have an underhook. I'm gonna come to my knees and do some judo. You can make it as, as simple or as fancy as you want, because if I chose to be even more fancy, it's all about Natasha. If Natasha ever gives up, I just take my guard back, right? If I'm pushing away and Natasha just stops, cool, guard, we play guard, it's fine. But in moments, uh, go ahead and put me in regular side control again, right? So we're here, I got this. I don't want my wrist here, like I said, wrists are useless. I turn this way until it's my elbow. And then from right here, I go ahead and start driving. Natasha's trying to salvage this, he's driving in. I rise into space. And I don't like this. I still feel like she's over my hips. I rise until my leg is near her. Now this feels pretty good. Now I use my underhook to come up and I can even do like a harai goshi. I can drive into her and toss. How fancy I get is really just kind of how much fun I'm having. You don't need to do butt judo, but it's very satisfying. <laughs> I could just easily just replace my guard, which is really what you probably should do. But that's not as fun as tossing someone from your butt. Trust me, when you do it, it gives you a feeling of like, ooh. <laughs> so try the same frame in their armpit. This was a little harder sometimes. If they really have you dead to rights flat, like you kind of really screwed up. And you're gonna have to do regular jiu-jitsu, right? What's regular jiu-jitsu? It's a bridge and getting your elbow in and trying to do all this. Even if I fail at all of that, Natasha has made the space between Natasha's armpit and hip now so I can turn away and insert my elbow. Everything I'm doing is simply to make the gap between her armpit and hip wide enough for me to get my elbow in there. Got my elbow in there, I feel good now. I feel pretty safe. I feel like I can start doing things. And by doing things, I literally just mean that same algorithm. Do I feel pressure? Yes. Rise. Do I feel pressure? Yes. 
Right. Do you have some pressure? No. Put a hook in. Once I have a hook in, any of you leg lockers here will see that I can enter and attack this leg or toss her in the air and attack that leg. If you're not a leg locker, you're like, what the hell are you talking about? But I can't show it to you right now because it's going to distract you. <laughs> Trust me, it's there. All right, off you go. One, two. I wanted to call the class just stand up because that's the old joke, right? When you first learn jujitsu, or like even back in the day, it's like none of that stuff would work on me. I just stand up, right? That was like the the comment made to every jujitsu person by some random person who never trained. Like some half drunk person at the bar is watching the UFC and he sees George St. Pierre murdering someone, and they're like, "I ah, never work on me." And I was always like, "Oh, these people are just stupid." But then I like, let's, let's, take, let's take these people seriously. Like, what if you just stood up? And I met a guy in New York. I'm forgetting his real name. His Instagram name is Tarzan BJJ. He's a professional <laughs> fighter. But all I remember are people's Instagram names. And when I rolled with him, he's a black belt as well. That's what he did to me. The entire match, all he did was stand up. And my jiu-jitsu was useless. And I was like, it's real. <laughs> you can just stand up. And that's kind of what this became for me. Everything is harder when you have to also keep your partner down. Right? Everything is harder. If you only have to just pass their guard or only have to do a submission, it's easy. You're focusing on one thing and it works. But if I have to do it and keep them down, if you've ever rolled with any MMA fighter who likes punching people in the face, which is a lot of MMA fighters, they will stand up. You take them down or do any jiu-jitsu, they will be fighting to stand up. And it makes it harder. This little frame is a little tool to help you. But even if you're not using this frame, Anytime you have a guard on someone and you're sick of them doing anything, just stand up. Tasha, can I borrow you? It doesn't matter what guard you have. Let's imagine um, that Natasha's got really good guard passing from closed guard. And I'm worried, like, oh no, Natasha's going to pass my guard. Or, even worse, she's stalling. She's postured up tall, she's hunkered down, and she's like, ha ha. And I'm just like, no, but I, but I want to do things. So she's like, no, I'm staying back there. Okay. Not on top. <laughs> Literally, this is my favorite thing ever. But anytime someone tries to stall me in my clothes guard or any guard, I can just be the one on top. And I literally just do a technical stand up and touch a knee and push their head. And they fall over. It looks really silly. But it's just like the world's laziest knee tap ever. All right? But it's that idea. And if I've done that once or twice, Natasha's going to be like, no, I don't want to do that. Then what's Natasha going to do? When I start standing up, she's going to drive forward because she doesn't want to get knocked down again. She's going to drive forward into me. And if she does, she stretches her body. Look at her body. Her head is nowhere near her hips now. Now if I go for any sweep, she's so vulnerable to these fights and so vulnerable to leg lock because I made her aggressive. My entire game, when I'm having fun in open mats and enjoying myself, is to convince, oh, there you are, hi, <laughs> is um, to convince my opponents to be aggressive so that I can take advantage of their sloppy jiu-jitsu. Because generally speaking, when people get super aggressive, they get sloppier, and I, it helps me out. When someone is, is really good, especially a black belt or someone who competes at a high level, even with their pro belts, they're very, very good at closing down all the doors, making my life really hard. Well, I have to punish them for that. Well, what? You can't have it all. Right now, I'm super safe. Natasha can't control me, but I don't have any control of her either. Right? Right here, I'm... I'm controlling Natasha, but I'm vulnerable because I've opened myself up in order to establish control. And that means Natasha can also control me. There's no free lunch. You always have to choose. Mobility or control. All right? So, that being said, yes? So there's a, a game from side control. Um, there's a frame. Yeah. So um, I was under the impression, or we were under the impression that there's a high risk for Kimura. Um, show me some of Kimura in you. Did you get Kimura? Because I, I've been doing that the central today, but I just don't see it. I no, no, no. He came more at me. Wait, oh, I came more at you? He came more at you. Oh. He's doing good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's wrong, but. but. <laughs> that sounds like. A but, 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 but generally, <laughs> generally speaking, like exposing an arm here, like, it sounds okay, so like yes. a. We're 100% breaking the rules, right? Like, 
Um, almost every instructor here has said something on the lines of keep your elbows close, bring your elbows home, don't open the space in your arms. And I'm 100% doing the opposite. I'm saying open the arm. But the only reason I can open the arm is because I'm simultaneously occupying my opponent's armpit and stopping them from controlling that arm that's out there. So um, here, I have my elbow open, right? But Natasha doesn't really have an angle to control my elbow. If I were to extend my arm, this is now bad. Life is now not fun for me. But even here, I can do like the reverse buggy stuff and there's still stuff here for me because she has put her head and her arm together, which is a vulnerable thing. Come back out. Mm -hmm. But right here, I feel good because of my structure. The shape that I've made is strong and hard to control. My armpit is not. When she has her, so because right now, that's the cool thing. Me having her armpit is good for me, but simultaneously, she can have my armpit, which is bad for me, right? Because the armpit is control for her. So I don't want her to have the armpit, so I change it and make what she has my elbow, which is good for me again. I'm using my elbow as kind of a protector of my armpit. That's really how I use it, and it really ruins most things. As long as her force is coming towards my hand, her, her stuff comes into here and it makes my life really easy. Is that kind of making sense? So I don't, um, the Kimura, are you worried about me being Kimura? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, come on, have one second. I'm gonna, is there somebody, I think you were talking about that as well, do you want to do it to me? So like, we were talking about this earlier, and they can grab a Kimura grip, but as they grab the Kimura grip, an important thing to understand, this is a slight sidetrack, I don't want to lose too much time doing this because I'm very good at dropping in rabbit holes, but symmetrical and asymmetrical techniques in jiu-jitsu are a really important thing to understand. There are certain positions in jiu-jitsu in which one person has a clear advantage, or one person has a clear dominance, and there's other, other positions where you're actually symmetrical. A, the greatest example of this, stand up for me, is Oso Tagari. If I go for Soto Tagari crappy, he can also Tagari me. We're completely symmetrical. Sitting to the floor. Uh, all you in your butt for me. The most common one, right? 50 50. Heal with me. Ready, set. <laughs> right? We're symmetrical. Now, 50 50 becomes less symmetrical as I adjust it to not be exactly 50 50. Well, the Kimura is the same. Stand up. A Kimura is actually the arm version of 50-50 or Osotogari. Because just like Osotogari, with our legs being like this, Kimura, the backs of our arms come together, I have a Kimura grip. All he has to do is pull my elbow through, and he has the Kimura grip. All right? So, because I understand that a Kimura is symmetrical, I don't have to fear it as much because he needs to have other controls. I don't think you've ever seen someone finish a Kimura with just that grip. They have to control their head, control a far arm, but they have to control something else. All he has my arm, I'm not concerned. So if I'm right here, um, from the neck or from the bottom, which one do you want to see? From the neck. From the neck, all right. So go ahead and grab your Kimura grip. He has a regular Which one do you want to see? Regular Kimura? Yeah, yeah regular Kimura. Oh, shit. So I don't know if you can do that one. Reverse Kimura then. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Cool. So he has this Kimura. But did you see what he had to do to get that Kimura? He had to create space. Come back to the frame. While I'm framing, what's my entire cue system? Do I feel pressure? Move to space. If I not, if I not, that's not English. If I do not, <laughs> I replace guard. So as he reaches for the Kimura, he's creating space. No Kimura. But this will not work if you pump your adrenaline up. If you don't think, <laughs> well, you can't think anymore. And your is gonna get crappy. I have to be calm. I feel his pressure, and the entire system is here. He's grabbing my wrist. He probably wants to come over me. That means he's not thinking about his feet. I'm happy. I'll let him come over me now. Take the Kimura. That just means he doesn't have an arm to post with. Hey, Tom, come over there. Time for regular jiu jitsu. All right. So I don't care if people have grips on me if they don't also have some control of my core, that being armpits, hips, backs, and knees. Great, I'm gonna end the sidebar now before I end up making this Kimura class. All right, back to frames. Natasha, come on back. So, oh, dude, I still have time. All right, so we're gonna go back to the beginning of class where I talked about that dog leash. This is also because jiu-jitsu is fun. So I happen to like dancing, um, but not everyone in jiu-jitsu wants to dance with me. I think that's sad. 
And so I found a way to make people dance with me. And so this move is called a dog leash because when Chris Payne uses it, he uses it while he's on the floor and he will make people chase him like this. And it looks really silly, right? And I chose to apply that concept to standing. So what I will do is anytime that somebody manages to bobble their head past my arm, I will take this grip. And then all I'm gonna do is walk towards my hand and let Natasha try and take my back. No. Let's keep doing this. And then if I ever am done with this, go back to neutral. All right, um, it looks super silly. It looks like I'm making this up and like it's complete BS. Get with your partner and try this. All you're gonna do, you must keep your arm straight. You must have your thumb down and four fingers up. Keep it straight and be a zombie and walk towards that arm. Let them do whatever they want. Your only job in life is to walk towards your arm like a zombie and keep this hand protecting your hip. Just keep, you can literally just not even think about them and just blindly keep doing this. <laughs> and you're never gonna get your hip. All right, this is your task. This is your mission if you choose to accept it. Off you go. One, two. That complete nonsense can be very effective, right? Like. Just imagine, imagine going to a tournament uh, with IBJJF or wherever you are and like a serious situation going on and you just, <laughs> they can't score on you and they can't tell you that you're, you're doing anything wrong. Like you're just not letting them take your back. Um, I don't recommend doing this for too long. They will eventually get mad and try and slam you or something like Everybody do everything that I'm teaching you today is a great way to convince your partner to try and be violent with you. Like that's my goal. And so if you, that's not something that you want, maybe don't do this. Because like everything that I'm doing, like I want my partner to get angry. I want them to get frustrated. I want them to try and beat me with their strengths because that's easier. Like big, strong, dumb people, or not even, they don't have to really be dumb, but your anger will make you dumb. Think, think about like the last time you did something truly stupid, right? Like you had a bad conversation, you were angry, and then you, like, you stub your toe or you pour hot water on your, like you do dumb things when you're mad. Like humans aren't, good at complex reasoning while angry, which is not. I'm just taking advantage of that fact. And so if you, especially if you're a lower belt and you're doing this with a higher belt and you start dancing around laughing, they're going to try and kill you. <laughs> like they're going to try and kill you. Just be ready for that because they can't control you unless they enter that third dimension. They just can't. There's no black belt magic. They have to do all the same things that you do. All right? The safe way of doing it, Bon Natasha, is going to add yet another funny cue, which is, um, actually, if, if you're on Preet's site, he teaches this from bottom side control, a uh, very similar motion. Like he'll come all the way down, he'll teach um, the Hawking 2.0, where he'll catch this exact same grip, and then he'll switch his knees, and come like this. It's that exact same motion, and actually if you've seen wrestlers, um, they'll, in the case of this, they'll slide, slide, slide down, break a grip off, and then face up. So like what I'm making into a joke is actually some pretty highly tested, well reliable technique, but jujitsu can be fun. So after making them dance with you for how long you feel pleasant, you're going to imagine that you've been rude and farted and fan the fart. That's how you're gonna remember which way to go because everybody for some reason wants to turn this way and this just won't work. But imagine, whew, and then you're back in the game. All right, so that's all I want you to do. If you're gonna try and use this practically, I'm personally a very big fan of just being silly about it because it just is enjoyable to have fun with jiu-jitsu. Now for the end of class, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of entering into um, some legs. Not too fancy with the legs because it's only five minutes. I'm not gonna get fancy in five minutes. Um, if you already know leg locks, I might just show it to you if you can get it, great. But I've just done all of these shenanigans and my partner's quite annoyed with me. And we've gotten back to the ground. I just want to convince them to drive in. Natasha drives in, I do the same thing as before, I have my elbow. Once I come up to here, my moment where she's just sick of me and just gets lazy, and I get my foot in. If I can get my foot into here, I'm in business. If you notice, I have my shin across. I'm not doing a regular butterfly. It's a cross shin butterfly. I have my knee actively into her ribs and my toes are kind of standing on her calf. From right here, I have a couple of choices. One is a sweep, and this is, 
like I said, yet another thing that will cause anger in your partner. Because ever heard that expression, like, I could do this with my hands behind my back? We're going to put our own hand behind our back. And then we're going to grab Natasha. She's going to fly. Um, just to show Natasha can do the exact same thing to me, it's not just that... <laughs> it's not just that she's... Then also we're here. I'm driving in. Like so, she pummels her foot in. Oops, she's stepping on my calf. My hand is behind her back. She's going to grab my hand. She's going to pull, and I'm also going to fly. But look, leg lockers. It's a leg. <laughs> do a knee bar. Do a heel look. Do whatever you want. Have fun with it. It's there. All right? So anytime someone drives in, you have that opportunity. This is the easiest way I recommend doing it. It's not always going to be hand behind the back. So we're right here once again. She's sliding around, I get my foot in. Maybe her hand's hanging out right here. Grab the hand, wherever the hand happens to be, just to make this clear as to what I'm teaching you, it's all the same. If her hand's behind me, I grab it. If her hand's under my leg, I grab it. If her hand's above my leg, I grab it. The entire system is, there is a hand that is closer to you. You will grab it with your back hand. There's a hand that is closer to them. You will grab their armpit if you're a kind human or their chin if you're evil. All right, and then you will toss them. The way you toss them is by having an active knee and just flying in the air. So, version two, her hand's under here, I hold it, I grab it, flying the toss. Come back, her hand's above. I grab it, here, once again, flying the toss. Oh look, a leg. Have some fun with the leg. That's all I want you guys to try, but you only get to try it if your partner gives you space. Your partner does not give you space, you just stand up. All right? Have some fun. One, two. I have just been told by Christian that I have the power to go over time without getting in trouble. So, um... I can show more, or we can go into before, but before I show more, I like to make sure that we have comprehension of what we've already done. Is there anything we've done so far that gives any of you guys pause? Like, no, I don't think that'll work. Or like, I'm having a problem, coach, can you help me? Anything like that before I move on into like, how I use this in scenarios and such. Yes? frame, how much of that do you deal with like them to just swim under the frame? Oh, they're going to do that. They're going to try and swim under the frame every time. But that swim under the frame falls into a category of our decision tree, which is, is there pressure? They can't swim and keep pressure at the same time. Any transition in jiu-jitsu requires a, for you to relinquish pressure, if only for a moment. And in that moment of them relinquishing pressure, you can square up. If they're so fast and so technical that you can't, it's time to go dog leash. And you can do that dog leash from any height. I taught it from standing because the dancing thing is fun, but you can do it on your knees, on your butt, on your back. It works at any height. Great question. And what uh, is? Cool. So what we're going to do now is a semi-live drill, which is you're going to let your partner pin you down or just be on top of you in any way. And I want you to try and find your way to this elbow frame and see if it can't help you stand up. And in the process, if you find guard and leg lock them or toss them in the air, great. If you sweep them, great. Don't forget the rest of jiu-jitsu. None of the that I teach is meant to replace your jiu-jitsu. This is supposed to be a complement, which is an important detail that I'm gonna talk about right now. This frame is made for a person who is trying to take your back. That is the use case for this tool. You can use it other way. Other places, of course. But the use case for me having my hand like this is a person who wants to be behind me. If Natasha is circling that way, I should flip my hand over and play a regular collar five. Because the first thing that started happening to me when I was using this is that, come right here, hug my legs, I, I faced wrestlers and they would do this. And then they would start walking that way. And uh, when I did that, I had a very hard time using this frame because there's no pressure on it. But with her pressure, I also couldn't stand up. But if I simply switch my frame over to this side, I'm now back in the game. But if Natasha changes her mind and walks back towards my back, look what happens to my arm. I'm being Americana. 
so I must flip my frame over when they're taking my back. So keep that in mind, that if your partner is moving towards your chest, you want a conventional collar tie. If they're moving towards your back, you want this upside down collar tie or frame or whatever you want to call it. I'm still working on what name I like the best for this. I'm just pretty much calling it a frame or an upside down collar tie. Some people I showed it to have more interesting names, but this is what I got so far. So get with your partner and just, I want you to be creative with it. Let your partner put you somewhere and see if you can't use this to be a means to create space and stand up. I want you to go, I want you to run the problems, then we're gonna come back and talk about it, and that'll be all. One, two. This is just a piece of what I use it for. I tried to be really disciplined and not dive down too many rabbit, rabbit holes. And so what I want you to get out of this is just, if you are disciplined about using just this little piece of your elbow, you should be able to get up in almost any situation. You might show them your back, but as long as you can catch that dog leash or throw them away, you should be able to stay in the game. Um, there's more, but I think that's good. Did anybody have any cool problems that you want to uh, solve before we close out class entirely uh, from, from your experimentation? Alrighty, everyone's ready for the, uh, the assassination game and pizza announcement. So uh, thank you so much for coming to my class. If you uh, like me, follow me on the Instagram. It's uh, Charles Harriet. Um, if you like, I have DVDs, of Beach Fanatics, all that good stuff, if you like that. But other than that, thank you for coming to my class. I really appreciate it. And please use it. And if you have problems, I want to hear about it. Like, I love talking jiu-jitsu on the internet. Like, it's half my life now. So, thanks, guys.